Welcome to a short guide that will basically tell you everything you need to know to play the game and win the game and more importantly, have fun at the game. Now, this game is one of those types of deals where you have to replay some levels again in order to get stronger because you'll never be able to complete the entire game without unlocking most of the permanent upgrades which are the sex over here. So, let's begin. Number one, after completing a mission you'll have to replay it to get all of the rewards, but after finishing it you'll see the bonus objective. Sometimes you can do the bonus objectives without you know, without knowing them, but most of the time you'll have to replay the mission again. Now, it doesn't seem that obvious in the beginning, but you'll need a lot more upgrade points. You'll need hundreds of upgrade points just to play the game at a decent pace, otherwise you'll get stuck a lot and you'll not be happy with your progress. So some stages will require you to kind of choose what you want to do a bonus objective. For example, over here, don't use any rations, don't let you should take damage, don't let so receive damage. Even though it's possible to do all of the objectives in the same mission, it's going to be very hard, so I recommend you focus on the one or two bonus objectives. Plus, see that crate over there above the origami? If it's locked, that means you haven't found the permanent upgrade. If it's open, that means you have found it and open it. You just have to use the thief. You just make the thief and then put the thief on top of the box and it will open it. Some levels will have two boxes, some levels won't have any boxes, which can be a little bit weird, but hey, that's how you do it. So yeah, always do the bonus objectives and get the chests. In number two, after, after you finish your location, you'll have to repair various structures. Some of them will give you permanent upgrade points, some of them will give you talismans. It's very important to do it, so don't forget to do it, because if you just leave them like that, you'll have to do a lot of missions. So, in order to progress with this one, just assign the villagers to a project. Sometimes the villagers will need to pick up materials, and then you can assign them to the project. And then just do the first boss fight, or whatever fight you like most. It's only one minute, it's basically 90 seconds if you have to do all of the sorting and tactics before. And that will progress the stage and you can get, again, more upgrade points, more talismans, more cosmetic stuff and more interesting things along the way. Plus, when you finish the entire rebuilding process, you'll get an important thing. Usually it's a talisman, but it's well worth it. Tip number 3. The, the difficulty is very misleading. The first five locations will seem very easy, but the bonus objectives are hard and later you'll encounter bosses as elite minions. You really need most of the upgrade points, even though it seems like you could skip most of them. Yeah, you'll quickly see that it's not really skippable. Because you'll be using a lot more villagers, and you need to use more classes, and the enemies will get much bigger waves and much stronger. Tip number 4. Defeating bosses for the bonus objective is a lot easier if you do it later, so don't worry too much about it. You can come with better equipment and better upgrades, as you can see. I was trying to do this one, but nah, I can just wait. I don't think we'll get anything too major. Because this one is super, super hard just because of the way the design of the boss is. So don't worry too much about it. You can even get some of the later ones if you want. But yeah, with the upgrade system and the class system, don't worry, you can do it much easier later. Number five, let's go into talismans. Now you can also go to any base you like and enter it. Plus, you don't have to go to the gates, you can just uh, press escape and go to the stage selection, which makes things so much easier. Stage selection instead of going to the gates. Now, you can get some upgrades for the talismans later. If you're wondering what this is, this is just topping off your max rations and your max crystals. As you can see, you can get some of them if you just enter your bases again, but it's kind of boring, so I don't recommend you do it. Bon appetit! So some of my favorite talismans in the beginning of the game and towards the mid game will be this one. More attack power for villagers, more attack for... So because he kind of loses it with this one. More attack based on the number of crystals in possession. It's not such a big deal, but remember, if you have a lot of crystals and if you're going to be using your bow or your sword or your combo attacks, you'll be doing so much more damage. So it's more or less based on damage and this one is super super important. Well, I wish I could tell you what I got it, but like I said, you have to complete all of the objectives, repair all of the things, because it's super useful. This is a massive game changer. Now, if you don't have any of these, there are some things that can help you. Don't take this one, because I think it's only the first attack every night. It's not really going to make you that much stronger. You must that one. I guess this would work very well for bosses. 
use an arrow attack or something stronger. If you don't have some of this stuff, I recommend you get stuff that helps your villagers. Stuff that is related to the economy of the game. So don't worry too much about it. Now, Super Aguar, let's explain this a little bit. These are basically your skills that are on cooldown. Later on you can get some upgrades for it. So what are the more important ones? Well, first, I think in the beginning of the game this is a massive help because you can just fight on a flank and then return to Yoshiro. It's also going to be helpful for some boss fights because you can just teleport out of the way of, of a big attack or something like that. Or if you're just collecting stuff on the map and then you just use your teleport and go back to the main attack area. It's useful. It's a teleport that can have a lot of uses. The Subaguar, the Suzuki Flame is not so useful in the beginning because you will not really encounter too many dangers. But this is your boss fighting weapon. You'll have to use it for boss fights. The level itself is not so useful in the beginning. That attack power and movement speed of villagers is very useful to upgrade for your archers when they have a harder wave or something like that, but it mostly depends on your playstyle and you'll use it maybe one level or two and then you'll figure out better options. Well, this is again for much later, for some other stuff. And again, a defensive item that is mostly going to be useful against bonus object for bonus objectives. And this is the reduced damage, probably the least useful one because you have a shaman that can heal them or you can just retreat them and you can, you can do a lot of stuff but not so useful. So mostly you're going to be using this one for the boss fights. Suba Zuku Flame. This one to teleport for utility and I think yeah this one would attack power and movement speed of villagers for the harder parts of a wave. And also later you'll get the bow, that means you can ex... Again, it's one of those things you have to equip a skill. I prefer the explosive shot, at least in the beginning when you get it, so don't worry too much about it. Now let's go to the hardest part of the game, which is the permanent upgrades. I remember you can always redo them for whatever character you want. And at some point you'll unlock the saw upgrades. I think it's before the... yeah, it's before the lake mission. It's going to be pretty long until you get them, so... Don't worry about it, it's going to be a while, but you'll get them eventually. So in what order did I upgrade my units? Well, if I tell you this, it will be a bit of a spoiler, but it's a guide, so don't worry too much about it. So go for Archer 6, as you can see it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The last upgrade will always be the strongest one, and it's definitely always worth it. So go for Archer 6, then I went for Thief 3. Well, I explained the Thief a little bit, he can unlock permanent upgrades from the level itself with the black chest. You also get crystals from the white chest, which is kind of important because you can speed up the progression of a level by a lot. You can sometimes open pick locks, but I didn't see too many of these. And getting a lot more crystals or rations is not so useful, so I don't upgrade them to the last one. Not sure what use this could have, I guess at some point you'll you'll want it, but for now I don't think it's that useful, so if he's only level 3, Sumo is free. Now, I guess we can explain a lot of things, but it's, that, it's not that important. The main thing is that the Sumo doesn't really do a lot of damage. He can stun, he can stagger enemies. But be careful because he uses up a lot of crystals, 300. And sometimes you just don't, don't do enough damage if you maybe have a Sumo, maybe have some archers or some other stuff. So this is uh, enemy, this will taunt the enemy units. He's great at defending, but he's very bad at making anything else. And then ascetic six. Well, this unit makes a lot more sense if you can just upgrade it to the max. So some units will make sense if you if you upgrade them to the max. So this will slow the enemy. This will damage the enemy. This will lower their defense. So the enemy will take damage over time. They'll be slower, and they're also. In, receive increased damage from so and the villagers this is why this is so useful and so it's a massive help in the end game that's for sure and it's also very useful against bosses this will help you kill the bosses much faster if you have one in your team so yeah i prefer one in my team with archers and that will be a big help in the beginning to get the first bosses out of the way and then shaman free you'll need a lot of healing because you can use rations to heal your soldiers or your villagers but it's going to be Quite expensive, and sometimes you just don't notice it in time. 
So a little bit of upgrade does a lot of good work user here. Increases the amount of health a shaman can heal. From what I saw, the shamans don't heal during the day, so they only heal during the night, so be careful about it. This one, I don't think it's worth it, it depends on the difficulty, if you're having a hard time to level it, maybe you can do it much later, but I don't recommend it. And then the Spearman. The Spearman is a bit of a weird thing because it costs 100, it doesn't do much more damage than the Woodcutter. I think this is where some people will be... I don't know, they will not understand some things, but don't worry about it. So later on you'll get much stronger enemies. The woodcutter can do more damage than the spearman, but the spearman can attack behind, you know, the safety of his spear range and do some other interesting things. Plus you can just set them behind the barrier, you can do a lot of useful things with them. So, archers, max, thief only to 3, sumo to 3, ascetic to 6, aiman to 3 and then spearman. It also depends what you get along the way, but you kind of get the idea. Now let's speak about so upgrades, which is the playable character. Well, of course I recommend you just get the extra talisman slots. You can also increase your support guard, but that's not so important. You can also, if you're having trouble with the strategic layer of the game, you can up, you can unlock some of this stuff, which will help you massively, as you'll be able to assemble all of your villagers in a location, you'll be able to command each other to move or stop via the command screen and also this one. Six villagers in place. For example, you want to leave an archer on a tower that will never move from there, that's how you do it. Archer is kills. You probably prefer the explosive arrow just because it's so good in the beginning. Let's see the little explanation. Amazing, right? Right. And probably people will prefer the parry as well. Let me see what the parry, yeah. Nice, isn't it? Again, it depends on your playstyle and how you want to do it. And later you can unlock some of the dances, but this, these are the more important ones. Also, for example, get a very strong shot like this in order to kill the slower enemies a little easier, but you can also slow them down in case it's too much. And this will be also for the later parts of the game, like I said. Now, this was tip number 8, which was a very long one. Tip number 9, in a mission, let's speak about the mission themselves. Play selection, I guess I can show you one of the more interesting ones. Yeah, the ridge. Let's click on play again, even though I completed all of the stuff. Now, in the missions themselves, my recommendation is that you do the purification first, free the villagers first, so you can put them to work to unlock or repair certain locations after that. Press V for a better view always. And don't... If you replay a level, you always get the villagers unlocked, so... That's why the mission can be a little easier. Let me show you how it is with a faster talisman, faster purification. Okay, just imagine I had one of the villagers as well, and then I assigned them to repair some stuff like this. I guess it's more or less related to how the game is played. Uh, there was an upgrade you can get for so for him to get extra damage from the basin, but for now it's kind of useless. Also, plan ahead where you want to defend. For example, this is a good location to defend. So, purification, free the villagers, get the rations, also get the little plants because they give you a few crystals, which are very helpful to start your economy. I just like to do it in a kind of a line, so always feed the villagers and do the purification on a certain pathway. You can also press M in the mission itself to see a better view of the map. As you can see, it's basically a free lane map. That doesn't show where you can repair the things, and remember that you have usually two levels to a map. Sometimes the, the spirits are hidden, and in order to get the spirits or the purification things, it's a lot easier if you just look at the smoke, because the smoke will always be from the same position. This thing is harder to look at, the caterpillar thing, but the smoke... It cannot be hidden by the camera that much. And finally, tip number 10, which is the combat one. 
Well, let's move around the map to get the extra crystals. What do I mean by that? After you unlock, let's say, a location like that, you can see that uh, you have access to extra plants and such. See the possible attack routes, and more importantly, plan your defenses. You might think, well, what do you do now? Well, for example, over here, you can repair the barrier, you can make so kind of a pathway over there. I always recommend you keep so on the you keep your shield on the movement. And most of the time this will be the first thing you do in the mission itself. So start with Yoshiro, plan where you want to keep her. But like I said, you can always just you know, do a little bit of scouting if you're not sure. And then choose your defense position carefully and you have a few things that will help you in the mission itself. So the barriers are pretty good, but later on when you encounter the bigger saw seat, they will destroy pretty fast. This is a tower, it's also very useful. I I kind of forgot what, the, what are the bonuses for uh, this thing over here. I forgot what the bonuses are, but I think they give you either a little defense or damage and stuff like that. Either way, this would be another good position to occupy if you can get this repaired. So this is the bonus chest, which can appear on levels. So let me show you how that works as well. It's, it's pretty easy. Let's make the villager go over here. Since it's not a black chest, it's not that important, but you can get some crystals out of it. And why are the crystals so important? Well, I think this is the major part of the game. You need crystals in order to carve the path. If you don't have crystals to carve the path, then you basically are kind of out of luck. As you can see, if I choose to defend over here, I will need to repair this one as well. Sometimes you find Russians, sometimes you find crystals, and you can always change their class after you are done with the archers or the thief or whatever. Also, sometimes the things are hidden behind buildings or such, so don't worry. Sometimes it's even in the building itself. Now about the combat portion of the game, well, you probably know too much about that already, so I'll not insist too much on it. Well, just remember to get the 8 or 10 or whatever you have, so you can get the bonus talisman from the shrine. And then you can start the mission. Shift plus F to speed up time while you are in the day and during the night, you just have to defend. Now, as for the defense itself, I guess I can show you a little bit. You would probably want something like this. And this is for the later levels. I guess it also depends on how you want to view things. But remember, the turtle means they can be a swan or some other classes. The swan, I guess it's man or female and the men can become the sumo wrestlers, the team, the women can become the healers. It's a bit weird that it's designed like this because it's not very clear, but hey. I guess, I guess this could also be explained a little better, but you, you'll get the hang of things. So let's say you want the aesthetics or sumo over here. I prefer the aesthetics to be honest, especially after I know that I can upgrade them to a huge degree. Let's just say this will be a sumo. The sumo will get all of the aggro, these guys will damage them. Oh, those things will. Well, here they're all archers, doesn't really matter. So control and then use your ability with the bow. Now the main part is that when those things arrive, you'll not see where they are. You have to hunt them down, there, there it is. Oh, I missed that. It was moving away. I don't think it can attack me, so eh, whatever. Okay. 
Yeah, but that's probably the most dangerous thing since it will not allow you to use your commands, your strategic layer commands. If the villagers are defeated in combat, they'll just cocoon and you can free them in the morning, so don't worry about that. I guess you can have two healers, but it's kind of a waste of force. I'll just show you how it's used. Now, the cars can be a little bit annoying to play around with, but trust me, they work completely, so don't worry too much about that. So yeah, the defense will look something like this, and then you can use soul to do the rest. They'll also kill soul, the shaman, so that's also a big bonus, in case you have a bonus objective of not using rations. Great, isn't it? Oh, not again. Can also double jump over here and arrive to part to reach the... Hey! was kind of like a perfect defense and as you can see, I don't know, it's not a hard game but you need to practice a lot in order to really reach the potential and when it's daytime the enemies will also be destroyed so don't forget to pick up the extra crystals. So again, kind of the path as you can see it eats up all of your crystals so that's why you need to do the exorc exorcism and some of the other stuff. Now, how do you get those extra crystals during the day? Well, like I told you, always be on the move, always get the extra stuff from the plants, even though it's not a lot, you'll need it. Repairs completed. Usually there's something hidden whenever you see the repair thing. Well, as for the last one, I guess this is the hard part of the game. You need to kind of remember where they are. If I were to guess... I also use the bow on the animals, so that's why it's double useful. Yeah, this one is over here. You can always miss it because it might be hidden. Very well hidden like this. And at this point you probably would unlock the gate and go to the next stage. Oh, he repaired this thing. I really wish to tell you the bonus, but I think it's damage or something like that. It tells you the first time you unlock it. You can also just select another stage or restart to get better equipment or change your equipment. This also works for boss fights. See, change equipment. You can get a much easier way into the menu like this. Anyway, have fun. Bye.